you decided you want to grow some tomatoes. Hmm. Green zebra stripe. Yellow globe. Cherry tomatoes. Cherokee purple. Brandywine. What's your favorite? Hmm. Grow the ones you like the most. I like brandywine. Let's talk about transplanting. Because the first thing you got to do is get some tomatoes in the ground. Unless you're sowing the seeds directly in the ground, first thing you got to do is a transplant. Whether you made a cutting, propagated your own, or got a little starter from the nursery, you're going to have to transplant. My number one transplanting tip is what's going on right here. Filling the, the hole you're going to transplant in with water liberally will make your transplants more successful. That first one is perfect. Now this, you can see, now that soil is moist, but you would lower your risk of transplant shock if you filled that hole with water. Because what's happening is, although those roots are undisturbed, the roots along the outside edge are exposed, and if you cover them with dry soil, you're, you're drying out your roots. It's one thing you just don't want to do. So this is where you can't be too wet for a transplant. You can overwater afterwards, but in the initial fact, just always fill that hole with water and then make a little slurry of mud to transplant into. Speaking of watering, now that you've got your new little sprouts in, hopefully you hardened them off so that they're ready for full sun. If not, you might want to put some shade over them. Now, so you've got your transplant in, obviously keep it watered. Um, gently at first, but do go ahead and get the leaves wet and keep them cool while they get past the the transplant phase, you know, once they've rooted in or are healthy. So you really shouldn't be spraying down that whole field of tomatoes like that. Tomatoes lose calcium through their leaves when you spray them with the hose. And as you can see right here, leaf curl is your indication that that has happened. Now if you have leaf curl going on with all your flowers on like this, you're going to have pollination issues. Um, you'll have a lot of failed blossoms. So there are sprays you can get to replace the calcium. You know, if it's out of your control and it rained hard and your, your plants curl up after the heavy rain, you know you're missing calcium, get some calcium on those plants. Um, so you want to fix that as fast as possible. Um, these are an indeterminate variety, so they are a vining tomato, but I live in the desert. It's really hot. You have that, you can see here's a good example of failed blooms. You know, most of those dropped off. There's one little tomato down in there, but you, there's a bunch of failed blooms. The case of these plants, that was largely due to uh, calcium deficiency. And see, like that one just snapped off, so that's obviously uh, not going to make it. They should be a little bit more hardy than that. You can kind of see the lump that it gets. There's almost, and yep, it just snaps right off. So that can be the result of inconsistent watering, too hot, nine times out of ten for me it has always been a lack of calcium and it, the way I've fixed it is adding calcium to the soil. Now you saw some dust on those. I've been showering these plants with diatomaceous earth, um, one because it's a helpful pest control, um, but it's also a gentle way of adding calcium to the soil and with the tomatoes i'll actually even i just completely shower these things with diatomaceous earth and then water it in gently i try not to blast the the leaves off but i get it wet as you can see so you can see the failed blossoms next to the fruits uh on this if this had been a healthy plant from day one, that whole cluster would be loaded with tomatoes rather than just those two. So that's where, you know, if you're getting partial clusters, you know there's something wrong. Um, you could be getting a lot more yield out of that same plant. So tomatoes, generally pollination happens just from the plants shaking. The pollen falls from flower to flower. Um, the wind will generally do it. If sometimes you can go around and just kind of shake your plants if you're worried about it 
as you can see this one another little new one starting pollination in tomatoes generally happens just from actually shaking of the bush provided that your pollination issue isn't something else so now here we'll start to look at these are indeterminate tomatoes this is a vining tomato and you can see you've got a main stalk a sucker and a leaf in that crutch is your sucker and then next to it is the leaf there will always be a leaf tied to a branch and with indeterminates you can actually increase your yield by snapping these off so that middle branch is what you would want to take off that's your sucker this you can see there is the top that's going up that's a very primary trunk of the vine now this only applies to indeterminate tomatoes bush varieties or determinate you don't want to prune now one thing i do you can either trellis these or you can do like i've done here and staking them down as you stake them down they will root all along the way like here's a good let's find one here here's a good root I, you know this vine's not even fully buried and you can see the size of that root that's dropped down so as you bury the rest of this vine it just becomes a whole root structure almost like another plant only they're all linked together it's kind of like you got tomato teamwork these are also if you are going to to use this method where i lay them on the ground like this you really wouldn't want to grow a bush tomato you're going to want to make sure you have an indeterminate tomato uh, variety they will trail along we i've had these that are six feet long on one vine these even with this method you do still want to remove most of the suckers you know in each particular spot along the way if you were to tr stake these down in a, a straight line to make a row of tomatoes you would let the the top of the bush here just continue to trail and get longer and then along the way you can see here i left one sucker to stand up like a tomato plant so i could bury this vine here and as you went along it would look like there were multiple tomato plants even though they're all attached to the same vine now once i let it shoot upward like that i would still go ahead and remove all the suckers as you stake them down you'll still remove some suckers but then you can leave one just like this one here you can see is basically a whole new plant and you can just bury that main trunk of the vine and it'll put down roots all along the way and then each spot that you want a bush to come out of you go ahead and leave a sucker in that location on a cutting this big i would remove some of the outer leaves because when you're going to root you don't want it trying to keep those leaves alive you just want it focusing on putting roots out of that stem so you actually kind of want to shock the plant a little bit let's take another one see if we can get a little better shot here here's another good example here's the very top so you're following the main trunk there's your leaf right there's your main stalk and right in the middle there are your suck sucker also cutting those off uh, when you're rooting you're trying to prevent you're cutting from wilting so the more leaf you've got hanging out there the more they tend to wilt at this point i'm just going to make this a new tomato so you can see it's already flowering oh now the green horn worm the infamous multi-eyed looking even though those aren't really eyes i don't think i don't know they got a big mouth and they eat your tomato vine they'll power through a surprising amount of greenery you can remedy these guys by just plucking them off your plant when you start to see little green almost black but really dark green looking pellets little balls on the leaf of your plant uh, chances are you've got a green hornworm because that's their poop so follow the poop trail and although they camouflage really well uh, you'll find them if you follow the poop this guy oh he's just taking a nap he's had enough of your plant he's like hey yeah grow some more tomato i'll be hungry later right now i'm digesting i'm gonna sleep it off had a little bender on that bush over there what do you got for me next harvest time there you have a really good example of well pollinated cluster of tomatoes look at how many of those are on each one you know all of these nice and healthy 
Oh, I see some heart-shaped leaves, so that's going to tell me probably a brandy wine here. Oh, yep, yeah, look, there we go. Nice red, large tomatoes. Brandy wine, uh, they're a low acid and, and very low pulp tomato. Uh, they're my personal favorite. These I wouldn't quite call a cherry tomato, but just small clustering tomatoes. Tomatoes are pretty simple. If they're ripe, they'll pop right off the vine. Unless you're making fried green tomatoes. You just don't really have any reason to pick them green. That's what they do in the stores, and that's part of why they have no flavor. Thanks for watching. Hey. Hey, somebody get me out of here. Come on. <laughs>